Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making homemade boba. Boba are those little tapioca pearls, you can find them in those lovely sweetened drinks. Sometimes they contain tea, sometimes they contain milk, but they always contain those beautiful chewy balls of tapioca that create an experience that you're kind of simultaneously eating and drinking. It sounds kind of nutsy, but it's amazing. Now a few months back, actually probably more like six months ago, I made a recipe for homemade boba. It was inspired by Cooking Tree. And in that video, I made the boba and I rolled them by hand, which ended up being a very arduous process. It took a long time, like, oh, it'll be fine. And it was fine, but it took a long time. <laughs> And in the comments, a few of you mentioned that there might be a better and faster way. So in my research, I discovered this antique that was used to make pills that were ball shaped. It was basically you had a dough of the medication that you were making and you made a snake and you used the machine to roll perfect little spheres of medicine. So then I fell down the hole that is the internet <laughs> and I discovered carp bait. What? Carp bait, carp meaning fish. So from my understanding, the sport of carp fishing is mostly centralized in the UK. And one of the favorite baits that are used are something called boilies, which are homemade carp bait that are made using this tool, which looks a lot like that old antique tool that I found. But this of course is made with modern materials all in plastic. So I purchased this online. It's made by the Gardner company and it's called a rollerball long base quite a name, right? There's two pieces. You take a strip of dough, you place it there, you put this on top and then you roll it like this and then it will roll a bunch of balls at the same time. They should be perfectly round and you can get how many? One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12 times as fast. Now I was super happy with the results of the boba recipe from last time, so I'm going to be using it again today. If you wanna see the original video, I will put a link down below. Okay, let's make this. Now, if you see little black dots moving around this wall or in the corner or on me or around, those are ants. I have carpenter ants in my space, but they are harmless. Well, they're probably chewing on wood, which is probably not a great thing, but. We'll see if we can coexist with the ants. If not, we might have to sprinkle cinnamon. I've heard cinnamon works. Do you have any tips, tricks to keep ants away without you know, poisoning myself and my environment? Let me know down in the comments. All right, a little bit of a tangent. So we're gonna need three ingredients to make boba. We're gonna need some muscovado sugar. We're gonna need some tapioca powder and some water. Oh, we're also gonna need some flame. So let's get some flame in here. We're going to take 60 grams of water, Boop. heat that up, along with 45 grams of muscovado sugar. Now we need a spatula. Right here. Oh boy. And we're just gonna dissolve that into, we're gonna dissolve that into a syrup. Now we're gonna turn off the heat and now we have 90 grams of tapioca flour. A teaspoon of that right into the hot syrup. And this is to help prevent lumping. So we're gonna add a little bit of that in first before we turn on the heat again. And we're gonna cook this until it's thickened. It's like a glue. Take that off the heat. I'm gonna add the remaining tapioca flour and stir that in. Initially when you do this, it looks like there's gonna be too much starch. But the last time I made it, it all incorporated in. Empty it onto our surface here. Now we're just gonna knead all the tapioca flour into there and get out any kind of lumps. Oh, this is such a pleasure. It gets so smooth and it's so warm. I love it. So I'm gonna reserve half and put it into a plastic bag so it doesn't dry out. Now the part that I've been waiting for. Let's see if the bait maker will work. Ah, I'm so excited about this. Okay, meanwhile, I'm gonna get some water boiling behind me so we can cook these once we're done. So we're gonna place the strip of dough right here. Place this right on top, press down and roll. Uh-oh. 
this down and roll. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> oh, let's try that again and dust it with a little bit of tapioca flour. I think my snake was a little too thin because they're not really touching. They're not quite big enough. Oh, it's working! It's working, it's working, it's working! Two? Okay, okay. So, I think what I have to do is make my snake a little bit fatter so that the dough actually touches the pieces of the equipment here. All right. Yes! So once we figure this all out, this does indeed work. So, what we need to do is make sure the snake isn't so narrow. So instead of going for 12, I'm going to go for 10 and put the snake in the middle. All right, here we go. Push down and roll. Am I getting boba yet? No. <laughs> now let's try dusting it. Now let's try rolling them. Here we go. It's not really working here, friends. <laughs> oh no. That first time it worked better. Now I think I made them too fat. So I think at this point I have plenty of starch on my tool. So let's remove some of the starch. Maybe that's part of the problem. Yeah, ready? Here we go. Push that on. That first one worked. Why isn't the other ones working? It looks like this is a case where using a tool for something else, for something else, <laughs> is mostly a fail rather than a success. But it does do it faster. Um, is it more convenient? I'm not exactly sure. So some of these are perfect. Look at that. It just rolls off perfectly. That's satisfying. Maybe this will be the one. Ready? <laughs> not really. I think I figured something out. I think I had too much starch on my little rolly ball machine. That's why the first batch worked best. In terms of getting the right diameter for my machine, place the dough in there, take this, give it a good press, and that will give me the diameter. Place it in here, take the top, press, and roll. Yes! Got it! Ah, that feels so good. Almost every single one. Have it! Boba! Yes! So it wasn't a fault of the machine, it's just a matter of trying to figure out what's going on here in terms of consistency with our dough. But it does work. So please, because I thought this was going to be a failure, and it's not, it's not. So this machine also comes in different diameters. I was only able to get the 12 millimeter, and based on this, I think they should be a little bit smaller than this. So just for your own information. I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of these and then we will cook these up. Yeah, I'm so excited. <sighs> Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back. I've already cooked my boba. It is very simple to do that. You can bring a small saucepan of water up to the boil, dump your shaped balls in, and they're going to sink to the bottom. Now resist the urge to nudge them because they're very squishy at this point and you want your boba to be round. So the boba will come to the surface and once they come to the surface, you can set your timer for 20 minutes. Now you're gonna reduce the heat and just allow these to simmer for 20 minutes and then turn off the heat and let them sit for 20 minutes in the cooking liquid. Okay, so now we are at the point in which we're going to make our syrup. We're gonna add 75 grams of muscovado sugar and to that we're going to add our cooked boba. Look at these, they look amazing. Look at that, they look great. These are so much bigger than the ones I made last time, but they're all the same size, which is great. I'm so glad that this worked out. I was about to call this experiment a wash, but it's just a matter of learning how to use the tool. Now, all we're gonna do is just dissolve the sugar. That's all we're doing. This is looking great! So syrup is made. So this time around I have a larger boba, so I'm going to use a larger glass. I'm going to place some of our beautiful boba into my glass. So spin the glass all around. 
Next, we're gonna add some ice. Not that piece of ice. <laughs> and now we're gonna top it with some milk. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. And then just to make it extra decadent, we're gonna add a little bit of heavy cream. Boop. Last time I whipped the heavy cream up, but I found that it's not really necessary. And there you have it, a beautiful boba drink made with a bait maker. <laughs> Yay, it worked. Alrighty, the time has come to finally taste the fruits of my labor. We have the brown sugar boba made with a fish bait maker. Let's give it a go. I'm gonna stir everything together. Make sure that the brown sugar gets incorporated into that. Tilaki malls. Woo! They still fit up the straw. Yes! <laughs> Mmm, so good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is so stinking good. So it reminds me of ice cream, but it's a little bit lighter than ice cream, but it has that lovely dairied richness that I associate with ice cream. It's, of course, thinner in consistency. It's not frozen. It's not like a milkshake where it's really thick, but you get that wonderful pleasure of cream and milk and sugar combined with the chewy bounciness of boba, which are absolutely delightful. The homemade versions, I think, are so much more superior than the manufactured ones. They still have a nice chew to them, but they're softer and more tender, slightly warm because we had it in the syrup. It's just so good. Mm -hmm. The homemade boba not only have a better texture, being soft and bouncy, yet supple and smooth, but they're slightly sweeter and they just taste really caramelized and molasses. They have a lovely flavor. Be sure to check out my other boba recipes. I have one for milk tea, I have one for a matcha, and I also have another one for the homemade boba as well, if you don't have the bait maker. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. I don't know where they come from, peeps. I really don't.